about experimenting varieties of your concept art with textural overlays. So here you can see I have a base plane that I drew, and then I just want to try out some dramatically different surface textures. And here are my results. So you might think, well, each of those took a really long time and you're only going to use one, so what's the point? Well, the method that I used to create this effect is actually extremely efficient. It means that setting up the first one takes a little while, but then each of the subsequent variations are extremely easy. And it actually all takes advantage of a technique we talked about in a previous video, using the warp tool to deform a two-dimensional graphic on top of your three-dimensional form. So in this video and the next one, we're going to talk about how you can do this sort of variation, but we need to explain some of the basics first. But as a quick reminder, if you look below the post, you'll find links for free brushes and worksheets, as well as in-depth premium series available in the Control Paint Store. Now, if you're used to texturing for 3D art, if you work in video games or something like that, this is going to look familiar to you. Because what we're doing is essentially doing a texture mapping, in which a two-dimensional graphic gets projected on top of a three-dimensional shape. And then once you've set up that relationship, you can change the contents of the graphic and the three-dimensional shape will update that change. Now the main thing you might not have expected in this case is that we're going to be using smart objects inside of Photoshop. So let's take a look at this example to see why smart objects are important. You'll know from experience that if I select a normal layer and do free transform, and then confirm that free transform, if I were to do another free transform, Photoshop thinks of it as still a square. It doesn't matter that I moved one of those points, it's forgotten about that. Well, let me convert this one on the left to be a smart object, and I'll perform the same operation. So I'll move one corner in, confirm that transform, and then I'll free transform a second time, and you can see it actually respects that change. It remembers that I have pulled one corner in, and now all the four bounding box corners are in the right spots. This also applies if I want to do a warp. And this is what we use to place those 2D decals on top of our illustration. So here I'm bending this in three-dimensional space, and then I can confirm that. Now where it gets really interesting is when I double-click on the layer thumbnail. This here is a temporarily created smart object that is sort of a separate document, but it contains the contents of this rectangle. So if I were to draw a um, red dot right in the center, and then I hit save, you can see here the red dot is updated on the form. So what this means is I've separated the content from the shape. And that means that I can modify this document any way I want, including pasting in some texture that you find on the internet. Here I've got sort of a collage of stickers just to make it really obvious. You hit save. Doesn't matter how many layers you have here in your document. Here I have three layers, but it all gets converted down into this flat shape. So in broad strokes, the workflow goes like this. You set up some placeholder images, which you turn into smart objects and you wrap them around your form. Next, you change the contents of those smart objects. So here I have one called chassis, which is the center. I can double click on that. And here you see this is my sort of temporary image. And I'll just paste some of those graffiti stickers into the center. Save that. And then you can see I have now applied that as the contents of my smart object. The shape didn't change. All that changed was the image. So let's look at how we set up those guides. So the first step in doing this in your own image is to plan out where you're going to have your overlays. And for me, I have sort of three major shapes. The first shape is my chassis. The other two shapes are my wings. And since I'll be using a lattice, which is what you call the warp deform, each one is going to be a three by three shape. So I'll have contours here on the thirds. And then I'm also going to draw the way that it cuts the other way. So you have sort of a three by three grid. 
And then at the bottom, I'd have a bit of an arch. And the same thing on the other side. So that would be one. The next one is going to be like that. And then the final wing will look in the same way. And these are not going to stay in my final image. They're just going to be guides for this next step in the process. But since this video is starting to run a little long, we're going to break this into two parts. And in the following video, we're going to make our placeholders, warp the images, convert those into smart objects, and then 